We're going to look at an example Selenium script, Selenium in Python. This is a practice project. It's a small mini project that will get you going with Selenium, especially if you're new and if you don't really know what the Selenium script look like. This is it. This is a very basic, very common uh, Selenium script using Python. Okay. So first let's go, let's execute the test case manually so we can see what the automation is actually going to do. So what the test is going to do is going to go to demo store.spreadsqa.com. This is a site I have for my students or my students can use this. I have different versions of this and you can create this if, if you can use this for the front end, but if you want a full access to the back end, you can create your own version of this. It's really easy and it's really free. It's totally free. I'm going to link some videos that shows you how to create this for your own on your local uh, server. This one is public. You can actually use this site. So this is just an e-commerce site we used to practice on. It's a real e-commerce site. Um, so the test, what it's going to do is going to come here and it's going to open this page. It's going to search for, let's say, Nike boots. Okay. And it's going to make sure this message shows up. So basically the test is you search for something that doesn't exist, then the page doesn't blow up, right? It's actually, it's going to look for this one. It's going to look for this error, this message. This, I, I, I don't call it error message, but this is a notice. So the test is actually going to do that. So we're going to write a script that will do everything I just did right now. Okay. All right. So I'm going to write my test script in VS code. You can use any editor you want. I'm going to do a new file. I'm going to call it selenium. Python search non existing. Yeah, I'm, I'm notoriously known for having long file names, but that's, that's okay. It's a long file name. So the first thing you do is you actually import Selenium. Okay. Web driver from Selenium import web driver. Okay. So the web driver is that what we are going to use. Then we're going to, we're going to run a Chrome. We're going to run this in Chrome. You can do a Firefox or edge or anything, but Chrome is the easiest one. We, so we're going to create an instance of the Chrome object. So as always, we're going to call it, uh, we're going to create a variable called driver. You don't have to call it driver, but it's kind of common. Everybody calls it that. Some people call it browser. That's just a variable. So you can call it anything. What's important is here. You do web driver dot Chrome. This is what's going to open the Chrome browser. Okay. Uppercase C. Now in the old days, meaning like three months ago, when you, when you do this, the Chrome driver needs to be available on your machine. Chrome driver needs to be installed, uh, available in your machine, in your PaaS, and it has to match the Chrome version that you have. A lot of tutorials you're going to see because they're older, they're going to show that. But now WebDriver implemented this, this feature that it would automatically figure out what version of a browser you have and it's going to go download the Chrome driver that is going to match your version of Chrome. So you don't have to do anything. It would automatically download it for you. Okay. Unless you already have it in the, in the past. If you have it in the past, it's going to get confused. It's going to say, Hey, you already have it. I don't have to download it. But then what you have might not match the browser you have because your browser automatically updates itself all the time. So they have to match. So all you have to do is just remove it from your paths and Chrome driver would go and I mean, web driver would go and uh, get it. It's called driver manager. I believe that's, that's the feature they've implemented. So if I was just to run this right now, this, this should actually open a browser, right? So let's tr let's try it out. Let me import, let me bring my taskbar here so you can see it opening. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to run it in the terminal. If I just tr try to run it right now, if I do it less, I'm here. If I try to run Python three selenium, it's going to say saying not uh, selenium not found. Let me make this bigger. Uh, I can just double click this. There you go. So you're going to say selenium not found. So I'm going to quickly create a virtual environment and install selenium. I'm doing that on purpose. I could have prepared that, but I want to show you how easy it is to do that because most people get confused with virtual environment. So I'm just going to do it. It takes like 30 seconds. I'm going to do Python three dash MVNV. This is a way to create virtual environment. I'm going to give it a name, my VNV. That's, that's going to be the name of the virtual environment. Then I'm going to activate it. VS code gives me some stuff. It's okay. I'm going to just say no. So I have to activate it. Source my VNV bin activate. If you're on a windows machine and instead of source, you're just going to run the, the first command to create the virtual environment is the same, but to activate it, you just run a script. So all you do is basically my VNV bin, uh, I think it's called scripts. It's not uh, scripts and activate that, uh, bat. You just run, you just hit that 
and it would work if you want to just ask the virtual environment i have a video like actually a few videos on virtual environments so look that up if you are totally new and you're not comfortable with virtual environments but now my virtual environment is activated i can do clear ls python selenium oh i did not install selenium so i'm going to do pip install selenium so all i did so far is create a virtual environment and i'm installing selenium if you do pip freeze you will see selenium, the latest selenium 418 is installed if you have an older version of selenium it's not going to do the part where it automatically downloads chrome driver that that comes from for four point something 4.12 or something like that okay so now i can run the script so we should see a browser open up if it's the first time you're running it it's going to take a little time because it's going to download the, the the chrome driver as you can see the browser actually opened up and closed real quick so i'm going to do driver dot get so get is telling it to go to the browser so for example we want to go to the home page right this demo store and it's going to be a string and it's http it's not https just keep that in mind and i want the browser to stay open because in chrome uh, it would automatically kill it it would automatically finish uh, close the browser so i'm just going to add a breakpoint so i just have a debugger so it will stay open and i'm going to go to the terminal and run it it opened it went to the site okay so that is the first step when you're writing a selenium script selenium is python the first thing is open a browser, go to the site that you want to go to. So what do we want to do? We want to actually type into this field. So we want to look for this field. So in Selenium, what you do is you look for an element and you do something with the element, right? Visually, when we're manually testing it, we don't pay attention to that because we, our mind automatically just know what we want and we just go do it. So in Selenium, that's literally what you're doing, but you have to tell it, go find this element. Every item on this page is an element. So the search field is an element. If you want this heading, that's an element. If you want this uh, this button, that's an element. If you want this picture, this image, that's an element. So in our case, we want to find this element and we want to type into it, right? So to find the element, there are a lot of different ways. So I'm going to right click, do inspect. I'm going to do it the, the quickest way. So I'm going to bring this down here. So all I'm going to do is click on this little thing that is like, uh, like, I don't know, it's a target, it's a selector. Come here and select that field. So now, over here it shows you the field. So the quickest thing is you can right click, copy, and you can do a selector. You can do XPath or you can do selector. Let me do selector in this case. I'll show you XPath and a different one. Okay, so now I'm gonna say search locator is this guy. This is why I was selected. You, like normally, you know, I, I, when, you, when you're doing this professionally, you don't, you don't want to do right click and copy. This is just a quick and dirty way. There is a, a format you have to follow to search for it. In this case, in fact, there is an ID, so I don't even have to uh, use a CSS. There's a, if, if there is an ID, you should use a CSS. I'm not looking at my notes, but in my notes, I am actually using an ID. Yes, I am. So let's, um, let's change this. I'm going to say search ID, for example which this is just an id without without the when you put the pound sign it's it's a css locator but saying id and that or you can just leave it like that okay then we're going to search so i'm going to say driver dot find element okay so we got to import one more um class which is the by class so just to make it quicker i'm going to copy paste the import statement from selenium dot wavedriver dot comma dot by import by so how are we going to look for this element? We're going to look for by ID, okay? And the search ID, right? So then this is going to return us an element, search element. I can just call it, that's just a variable, okay? Now what do we want to do to the search element? We actually want to send some keys. We want to actually search for something, right? So it's called send keys. We're going to send some keys, which are basically key, like items in the keyboard into the search field. So we're going to do search element dot send keys. So these are Selenium functions, right? Everything we're writing right now is in Python, but we imported a library, a Selenium library. So we imported specifically the WebDriver class. And those are built-in functions that are available on this. We created this object, which is a Chrome object. And now we are actually executing some methods. So find element is one of them. Send keys is one of them. So we're going to take that element that we found on the first step, then we're going to send keys into it. We could have done it in one line if we wanted to. So we're going to send keys. What do we want to type? We want to say uh, Nike boots, right? That's what we did when we manually did it. So let's execute it this far. 
and let's see what happens so i'm gonna since i have the breakpoint i'm gonna hit c for continue if you want to know how to use the breakpoint i have another video i'll link it in the description so the browser opens it is so quick right it, it actually typed nike I, I don't think that's how you spell nike but whatever boots okay so now what's the next thing the next thing we want to click on search but in this in this uh search field there's no button to click there's no search button right the only option we have is to hit enter so we have to send the enter key into it so now we're going to do send keys so we got to do another import to send keys to, to send like the special the special keys on the keyboard so what we're going to do here is the same the same element we want to do the enter key on the same element so we're going to do search element that send keys the keys class receives keys is what we imported we imported the keys class and we want to do we can do enter or we can do return okay let's do enter let me see what I would do I got. Yeah, I have enter here. Let's run it again. I'm going to hit continue and run the script again. It's a good idea to test it as you go. You write one line of script, test it. One line, test it. Otherwise, you, you don't know where the error is. It's, it's just a lot of work. All right, bam, it, it worked, right? It searched for it. So the next thing is we got to find this element and we got to make sure the text of that element is what we expect. So we're going to have to hard code the element. So first of all, this is the text we expect. So let's let's save that into a variable. I'm going to say expected text is that. So it's just saving in a variable. Now we need to find this element. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to inspect it. I always like to put this down here. It's easier for me to, to work with. So I'm going to do this. So it has a class. It's a paragraph with a class WooCommerce Info. In this case, let me copy. Let me do XPath. Even though says I'm a, I'm a I'm a fan of CSS more like more than XPath. So I'm going to say um, message locator is this guy, which is a CSS. So since the CSS has double quotes inside of it, I should use single quotes outside. Otherwise, it would be broken. So I'm going to say message element is driver that find element again right how are we going to find it we're going to find it by css selector css selector then our selector you don't have to put the selector in a variable i can just literally put the string here that's what most people do but that's just my style since i'm teaching it it makes it a little bit easier to follow and to see what's going on so now we find the element so we have to get the text so i'm going to say displayed text is going to be message element dot text once you find the element you just get the, the text you just find element dot text okay it's not a method so you don't do this it's just dot text this should give you the text so i'm gonna hit continue here I run it again and we can even print it on on the terminal so uh, something failed right saying that it can't find the element right away this is let's see what where the error invalid selector Let's see, this is a selector, say, say, selector. Uh, let's see, do I, do I have a typo? I don't think I have a typo by say, say, selector. Why is it saying invalid selector exception? I did not expect this, but I want to show you how to solve this. Find element. Okay, doesn't like the my selector I have. So I can build my own selector if I wanted to search for something and right click inspect. I want to do this. I don't want to edit the video. I want to show you how I solve issues live as they're happening. So this is, oh, I, I got the expat. This is not a, uh, this, this is an expat. This is not a CSS. Remember, I even said I'm going to use expat. So I'm going to do expat, not, not CSS. So I'm going to run it again. Errors happen. I really, in, in all my courses, when I, when I run into an error, when I make a mistake, I do my best not to edit it out. I'm, I do my best to show the error and how I solve it, how I go about debugging it, because a lot of people appreciate that. Because trust me, you are going to make errors. You are going to make mistakes. And knowing how to go about thinking about it now, knowing how to go about researching it and debugging it is part of the learning process. So some people complain that I make mistakes. And a lot of people appreciate that I show how I solve my own mistakes. So I'm going to keep it like that. I'm not editing it out. All right. So this worked, right? So far we hit the breakpoint. So if we print this display text, 
I can do PP and uh, variable name. That is what is printed. So now I just I just verify. I can just say assert display text is same as expected text. Okay. And then I'm gonna put an, an an error message. The expected text did not show up. And I can I can print out. Usually I like to print out the actual. I'm gonna say let's see expected let me put it in a new line expected is going to be the expected text and i'm going to say actual is going to be the uh displayed text okay so in this case this actually actually is a new line break i'm surprised it did it this way but let's see if that works when i click on new line yeah so we got to add a code and escape character and another one like this and escape character and another one like that okay this should work there you go this should actually pass i'm not expecting it to fit so i hit the breakpoint the pass so i can i can even print here that says print pass if it makes it this far that means it passed right so i can delete the breakpoint i can run it and voila it passed right whenever you write a script i always try to make it fail because i know if there was an error actually will fail sometimes you write a function that would never fail so it's not a real test right so make just watch it fail one time so i'm going to put a typo i'm just going to put a double n here and i hit go and i'm going to watch it fail and a lot of time you should use an implicit wait so i actually that i got the actual message um, one thing I didn't do is normally in this example, we didn't run into any issue, but um, you know, the pages might, might load a little slower, the element might show up a little slower. So you can use an implicit wait. So you can do driver implicitly wait, right? Implicitly wait. I'm just going to put 10 seconds. And let me fix the typo. Let me run it one last time. This is a typo. Now I expect it to actually pass. It's going to be super quick. And this is what are implicitly wait. Okay, I made a typo. I'm sure I made a typo here. There you go, I did. And this should actually pass. So this is a nice little Selenium Python example. I'm gonna give you a bunch of more of those. And normally you would use a framework. You don't write standalone scripts like this when you're writing automation. You use a framework, whether it's PyTest or Robot Framework or BDD or some kind of framework. So because you want your code to be reusable. But initially when you practice in Selenium, you write standalone scripts like this, just like one script on its own. And it's a really good way to practice Python and to practice Selenium. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it. If you want, let me know if you want me, if you want me to make more of those like simple examples, uh, please you know, put a comment in there and I definitely will make more of those.